Since the time of Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, Muslims have been encouraged to seek knowledge and extract its benefits for the mankind. The first public library in Islamic history was established by Prince Khalid bin Yazid in Damascus. This library housed Arabic translations of Greek works on chemistry, marking the beginning of a tradition of intellectual pursuit. Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him also encouraged his companions to learn engineering, even sending some of them to Syria to study the art of building catapults. Many doctors and surgeons rose to prominence during his lifetime, such as Rafida, the first female surgeon in Islamic history, and um, Atiya al Ansariya, a renowned doctor in Medina. Alongside promoting knowledge, the Prophet also fostered creativity, encouraging talented poets like Labid ibn Rabia. The Islamic tradition of scientific innovation and creativity continued to flourish during the Rashidun Caliphate. The pursuit of knowledge reached new heights during the Abbasid Caliphate. This period witnessed a state-sponsored translation movement, where works on various sciences were translated into Arabic. These translated texts were stored in vast public libraries across the empire, including the famous House of Wisdom in Baghdad, which contained over 400,000 books, the Saba ibn Ardashir Library, also in Baghdad with over 10,000 books, and the Library of Maro in modern-day Turkmenistan, which housed 12,000 volumes. This intellectual renaissance led to the rise of great scientists such as the mathematician Al-Khwarizmi, who invented algebra, and the polymath Ibn al-Haytham, whose groundbreaking discoveries in optics laid the foundations for the later invention of photography. This period also produced influential scholars like Ibn Sina, who wrote extensively on medicine. One of the most remarkable achievements of the Islamic Golden Age was the exploration and navigation by figures like the Andalusian geographer and navigator Kashkash Ibn Said Ibn Aswad, who crossed the Atlantic Ocean and reached the Americas long before Christopher Columbus, establishing peaceful trade relations with the indigenous people of modern-day Venezuela. The pursuit of knowledge continued to thrive. During the reign of the Seljuk Empire, many new schools, known as the Nizamiya schools, were established across the Muslim world. These institutions offered a broad curriculum, including subjects like the Quran, jurisprudence, history, mathematics, and medicine. The Fatimid Caliphate also contributed significantly to the intellectual legacy of the Islamic world. They built the al Azhar University in Cairo and a grand library in Tripoli, Lebanon, which contained vast collections of books on Islamic law, grammar, linguistics, history, engineering, geology, and chemistry. This period produced brilliant scientists such as Muhammad bin Ahmed al-Tamimi, who wrote about cures for diseases like conjunctivitis. However, the Fatimid legacy was tragically cut short when their library in Tripoli was destroyed by crusaders in 1187, who captured the city and burned the books. Under the Mamluks, new educational institutions were established, such as the Zahariya School in Damascus, and scientists like al Kalkashandi, who researched minerals, and Ibn al Labudi, who wrote extensively on physics, mathematics, and astronomy, made significant contributions. Meanwhile, in Central Asia, a scientific revolution unfolded under the rule of the Turkic leader Timur. The Timur Empire produced brilliant minds like the geographer Hafiz Abur who wrote about the shape of the earth and the geography of the Muslim world, from Morocco to Iran. The Ottoman Empire continued the tradition of scientific achievement, excelling particularly in engineering. The Ottomans produced extraordinary engineers like Ibrahim Effendi, who constructed the world's first submarine, and Ibrahim Mutaferika, who established the first printing press in the Muslim world. Additionally, Taki ad-Din Muhammad ibn Maruf invented the six-cylinder pump, and Akshamsaddin bin Hamza made groundbreaking discoveries in the transmission of diseases. We hope it was helpful if it was like, and leave your comments below.